In this video we're going to set up projectile for our 2D character. <clears throat> um, what I've done is I've just imported in a sprite um, or even a texture, made sure I configured it for retro sprites and then I created a sprite from that. In that sprite as well I've also gone into edit collision and it had a box around here and I've just grabbed that box and then deleted it and then saved the sprite out. With this sprite, what we're going to do is we're going to right click it and we're going to create a blueprint using. And I'm just going to save it into my sprites folder and I'm going to call it bullet underscore BP. So I'm going to go into the component section for this and I'm going to add a component and we've got this special one, it's called projectile movement. So basically when this is spawned it's going to move uh, at a certain rate. So under projectile here, we've got initial and max speed. I'm just going to put 2,500 into both of those. You can adjust these numbers depending on how fast or how slow you want it to go. And then I'm also going to have rotation follows velocity. <clears throat> I'm also going to change the projectile gravity scale because when you shoot this out, um, it will drop down to the ground. Now you can have that higher or lower. I'm just going to put mine at 0.2 so it doesn't drop too much. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to add in a box component and I'm going to size this up so it's pretty thin. And again, I'm going to do that for the length and the width. Okay, so that's all our components set up. Oh, in actual fact, no, we have to change the, um, the sentence for the collisions of this box. So if we have it selected here in the details panel, we're going to go down to collisions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this collision preset, okay, to custom. And I'm going to make sure that with pawn, it ignores. And with visibility and camera, it is blocked. Okay, so we're just going to have those blocked. The rest overlap, uh, except for pawn, which is on ignore. So once we've got that set up, I'm going to go to the graph editor. I'm going to select my box over here, right click it, add event on begin overlap. And I'm going to pull this out so when it overlaps, it's just going to destroy the actor. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in event begin. So when event begin play, I'm going to add in a delay of around one second or 1.5 and then I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to destroy actor again. So basically uh, if it hits something it's going to be destroyed if not it's going to wait 1.5 seconds and then it's going to be destroyed as well. So we can compile and we can save that. I'm going to go into our character now in blueprints. I'm going to open that up uh, what I'm going to do is, in my component section, I'm going to add in another arrow. So I'm going to go add component. I'm just going to add in an arrow. And basically where this pivot is, this is where my projectile is going to spawn. So you might want to play around with this position. Um, it's not going to be... It's not going to be on the geometry or anything like that, but it's going to be on the pivot. I'm going to go back to my graph. And you can see that my arrow is now on the left hand side. <clears throat> so to fire this weapon, I'm going to press on my left click on my mouse. So I'm going to right click here, type in left mouse. And you'll see there's a mouse event with left mouse button. And with that there, I'm going to type in uh, spawn. And we've got spawn actor from class. It's act looking for a class, so I'm going to get my uh, bullet BP, which is there, or you can just search for it up here. I'm going to spawn even if it's colliding, and the spawn transform, this is basically the location. I'm going to grab my arrow, and I'm going to get that. I'm going to pull out, and it's going to be a uh, world get world. I think for this here you have to have your context sensitive off if you're working in 4.5.1 and it's going to be get word transformation and then I'm going to plug that into spawn transform compile it save it and we'll test it out 
So as you can see now, whenever I left click, it's spawning. And whenever it's hitting the sprite, it's destroying. And after a second and a half, it will also destroy.